at the end of this video, you will be able to answer the following questions. What is the Haber process? What is the chemical reaction? What is the result of the Haber process? The benefits and harmful effects? And last but not the least, the importance of Haber process. Our home is currently suffering from many problems, political, economical, health, and environmental. But in the midst of this pandemic, we should still care and repair our nature, especially now that most living organisms are in danger. Scientists also deduce that some chemical reaction affects our biodiversity. Watch and see the Haber process, the chemical reaction that fits the world. But first, let me introduce my team. We are the TK Organization, together with my groupmates Alvin Allen Bondock, Julius Bagoisa, Chia Fauni, and Punat Kumara. Let's start with the definition of the Haber process and the individuals who contribute to it. The Haber Bosch process also known as the Haber ammonia process or synthetic ammonia process, was invented by German physical chemist Fritz Haber and is a method for directly synthesizing ammonia from hydrogen and nitrogen. He won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1918 for this method, which made ammonia production economically possible. Carl Bosch, an industrial chemist who shared the Nobel Prize in 1931 with Friedrich Berghias for high-pressure experiments, converted the technique into a large-scale process using a catalyst and high-pressure methods. Now, ammonia is produced by the Haber process, and we will show you the chemical equation for the Haber process here. The Haber process uses nitrogen and hydrogen as its raw materials. You may be asked, to name a source for these raw materials. Nitrogen can be extracted from the air. By combining methane and steam, hydrogen is formed. At about 400 to 450 degrees Celsius and 200 atmosphere pressure, purified nitrogen and hydrogen are passed over an iron catalyst. Some of the nitrogen and hydrogen molecules react to form ammonia as a result of this. As you can see, this is a reversible reaction. It is a reaction where the reactants form products which react together to give the reactants back. Ammonia breaks back down into nitrogen and hydrogen in some cases. To increase the yield, we can now cool the ammonia to turn into a liquid which is removed. We can then recycle the unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen back over the catalyst. The Le Chatelier's principle is used to describe how the conditions for the Haber process are chosen to maximize yield. The Chatelier's principle states that if a system is at equilibrium and a change is made to any conditions, then the system responds to counteract the change. We can adjust the temperature and the pressure to shift the position of the equilibrium towards the right-hand side. In other words, to produce more ammonia. To begin with, the forward reaction in the Haber process is exothermic. This means that a relatively cool temperature will shift the equilibrium to the right-hand side. The problem is that a cool temperature slows down the reaction. As a result, there is a trade-off between the rate of reaction and the equilibrium position. That means a temperature of 400 to 450 degrees Celsius is a compromised temperature. We get a relatively fast rate and a relatively high yield of ammonia. The iron catalyst also increases the rate of the reaction. The equilibrium is also affected by pressure. A high pressure will push the equilibrium to the right-hand side in the Haber process. As you can see from the graph, the percentage of ammonia is highest at low temperature. A low temperature on the other hand slows the rate. If we raise the temperature, the rate increases but the yield decreases. Also, 
high temperatures require more energy. Because of this, we use compromised temperature of 400 to 450 degrees Celsius. At very high pressures, the percentage of ammonia also rises. However, it is extremely expensive and dangerous working with very high pressures. As a result, we decided on a compromised pressure of 200 atmosphere. Now, as we said before, we use an iron catalyst to increase the rate of the reaction. However, you must keep in mind that the catalyst has no effect at all on the position of the equilibrium. We will now look at the result of the Haber process, the chemical reaction that feeds the world. The world population was rising rapidly at the turn of the 20th century. As a result, the world's food supply could no longer keep up with the population growth, and scientists began searching for ways to boost soil productivity. In 1909, Haber discovered that converting atmospheric nitrogen to ammonia enabled him to successfully fix nitrogen in the atmosphere. Using Haber's results, Bosch established the first industrial scale implementation of the Haber Bosch process, and nitrogen fertilizers began to be mass produced to fuel crop growth and feed the world a few years later. Today, the Haber Bosch process is an essential part of the traditional crop cultivation process all over the world. Now, what are the harms that are caused by the Haber Bosch process? Here are some of them. Firstly, the Haber Bosch process causes eutrophication and endangerment of living organisms. Why? Well, Soil fertilizers with ammonia are hydrophilic and therefore were thrown off in bodies of water. Algae in those waters grow exponentially. This is called eutrophication and it causes the prevention of sunlight from submerged organisms that require photosynthesis, which kill them. Those algae also consume most of the water's oxygen, which suffocates fish and therefore result to death. The Haber-Bosch process also inflicts harm over infants. Nitrate can be made by the process. In some cases, the compound which is found in the nitrogen fertilizers creep itself in the drinking water and are consumed. Once it enters the body, it gets converted into nitrites. These nitrites bind to the hemoglobin in the body, forming methemoglobin, which is unable to carry oxygen. This is called methemoglobinemia or baby blue syndrome. When the blood is unable to carry oxygen around the body, the baby turns blue, hence the name. None of this is good, but does the Haber-Bosch process even have any benefits? Fortunately, there is one. The Haber process had a major impact on the history of fertilizers and explosives. Fertilizers made from inorganic chemical sources were first produced from the 1840s. American agriculture developed methods for putting ammonia to soil as fertilizers in the 1930s. Furthermore, better processes for creating the chemical reaction were made. Ammonia used in fertilizer has made a compound one of the most important chemicals in the United States. It is the most important source of nitrogen in fertilizers today. The use of fertilizers today is over 400% greater than it was in 1940. The Haber-Bosch process is significant because it was the first to establish a method for mass producing plant fertilizers through the use of ammonia. It was also one of the first industrial methods to produce a chemical reaction using high pressure. As a result, Farmers were able to produce more food and agriculture was able to feed a larger population. Innovation, invention, and technology. But never forget about biodiversity. This is Julius Matthew Pagawisan reporting for TK News.